In this video, I'm going to make a Fizeau interferometer just for fun. Fun because I already have a Zygo interferometer, which is a Fizeau. But to see how well it will work with a green laser diode, and to show that it's really not that difficult to do. I've collected various parts over the years to make it easier for me, but it's still a very doable and worthwhile project for ATMs or, or clubs who make a lot of mirrors. I use an Offner setup, and I think it's by far the best method for testing telescope mirrors. A commercial interferometer with phase shift and all the bells and whistles will easily run over a hundred grand, but it doesn't have to be so expensive for testing mirrors. I spent, let's see, about $35.90 plus some screws and paint so far. Here's the basic layout of a Fizeau interferometer like my Zygo. A polarized laser goes into a special filter, which cleans up and diverges the light. Next into a polarizing uh, beam splitter and a quarter wave plate, and then onto a collimator for a parallel output. For testing flats, a transmission reference flat is used. One reflection from the reference surface and one from the test part reflected back into the collimator. Passing through the quarter wave plate again, the polarization is rotated 90 degrees, is then reflected 90 degrees into your eye or a camera. A normal beam splitter will lose about 50% of the light on, on each pass, and you would end up with only 25% of the light, whereas a PBS and quarter wave plate would lose very little. For alignment, a small corner cube is swung into the collimator's beam and it produces another dot on the screen and dots from the reference and part are aligned to it. So to start with, I needed to find a good strong base and a collimating lens. I remembered that I had a piece of butcher block table that was nice and flat and varnished Instead of using a piece of aluminum, the length is determined by the collimating lens focal length. For a collimating lens, I had a coated plano convex lens of well over four and a half inches, but that was too large. So I cored it to a smaller diameter to fit into one of the lens cells that I use on my solar projectors, surplus. It was too short a focal length so I generated the curve side flatter like I've done in my other video. However, after coring, it had about 10 thousandths of a wedge, which I had to work out manually. And that made the radius go from about F6 to F5.1, a little shorter than I really wanted. The only real problem was that it gave me more spherical aberration that I had to correct for. I corrected the spherical aberration with a star lap that I pressed into the pitch lab after I was finished. It just took me longer and I would suggest using a longer F ratio. You could even use a, uh, a little acromat if you've got one. I had an old bayonet mount for Zygo reference elements, but it didn't have any clips or adjusters on it, so I had to come up with those myself. I mounted it on a board and then that gets screwed onto my butcher block, cut a hole behind it the same size as the opening, and painted it black. Next I drilled and tapped a hole in my collimating lens cell and bolted it to a combination push-pull, rotation, tilt, and slide focus using my good old 10,000 thick Teflon tape for a nice smooth motion. I'll add locking clips later. So I have it set up in front of my Zygo, using the Zygo as a parallel light source. And uh, here's my collimating lens. It um, moves back and forth really nice. Then I have a couple of clips on each side once I set the focus. And a little bit of room in here that for a corner cube that I haven't got yet. So. Uh, today I'm going to mount this diagonal mirror and I put a center dot with a magic marker on my lens and marked it on the screen here and I 
and check that, that the opti optical axis is level and square to the edge before it hits this diagonal mirror. And after I um, after I screw this down, I'm going to put my beam splitter on. I have a 38 millimeter beam splitter. And I'm going to now about right here, and the, so that the beam comes up. I'd rather have it come up than come out the back because then I have to bend over and look. And after I get these mounted, then it'll go into another mirror and onto my spatial filter and a laser. Shown here, I've got my PBS prism mounted and then a small three quarters by a half inch mirror on the adjustable mount and then it focuses on to the uh, special filter with the uh, laser behind that. I changed my mind on the PBS orientation. I want the image to come straight out to a camera and visually and that way I can mount a camera holder right on the base itself instead of on the cover. I did discover that I have to use a quarter wave plate with a PBS and my first attempt to glue a window and quarter wave film onto the PBS was kind of a disaster so I have to repeat that and try again. So I need a corner cube for alignment. It produces a dot that everything gets aligned to and it needs to slide in and out of the beam and I made just a simple slide out of hard maple uh, plywood and just slides in and out um, it's going to have a handle hooked onto here because the whole thing gets covered up and handle needs to stick out After the laser and special filter and all the optics are mounted, uh, you can set the focus on the collimating lens. And I used a small telescope focused on infinity, lockdown. Then with a solar filter, I look back through it and move the collimating lens until I get a nice green star. Then I just locked it down. Now on the back end, I um, added this fixture here, and it's kind of it's hard to see, but it's got a flip mirror in it. I can there's a mirror that I can flip it all the way down so the light from the prism goes straight back through, or I can flip it all the way up, and light will come up onto this ground glass screen, so I can get everything aligned using the uh, corner cube. Um, but also, um, it will flip halfway down so that the light goes straight down, and it's going to hit this mirror here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. It gets mounted back behind here. It's just a black mirror. It's a piece of glass ground on the back side and painted black. Uh, so that I only get one reflection it, and this is going to reduce the intensity of the light that bounces back and this light will bounce bounce back into the camera at least that's the idea okay so finally I need to make a cover for this thing and uh, This is my handle for my corner cube, but it has to be put on after I put the cover on, because uh, otherwise I'd have to make a slot. So um, my cover is made out of eighth inch bolted birch, 
and I had to put a connector for the laser so that, uh, so I can connect it from the outside and put these wires in there. Plug my uh, power supply into here, and then my corner cube prism screws into here. If I can find it and get it in the hole, easier said than done. screws in. And then it, I just push it in to put the prism in the beam and then pull it out to take it out. And I have just some screws that screw it in to the, to the base. All there is to it. Okay, here Here's the back end of this thing. Um, on top is my ground glass. And here's the flip mirror. It can flip up so that the image comes up onto my ground glass screen. Or I can flip it all the way down so the image comes straight back. Or I can flip it part way down so it bounces off of a my black mirror and then out to my camera sitting on the shelf. Now the interferometer by itself is going to be practically useless unless you have a three axis mount of some sort either moving your part or moving the interferometer and so this is what I built for my mirror testing. On the back side you can see three DC gear motors that are connected to a cable box and a cable with speed control the mirror holder actually sort of floats on a piece of Teflon on top of Formica. On the bottom view you can see five ball bearings that glide on two stainless steel shafts. There's a piece of threaded Teflon attached to a spring bar that engages the, the focus of the drive. And there's a number of safety brackets that keep things together and keep things from falling apart. I survived the Wuhan flu Now I can make it to 83 But it's no thanks to Chairman Chi Now I can make it to 83 But it's no thanks to Chairman Chi